Hi everyone, another pack day here at reInvent, an amazing day with the Click team as well, and one of my favourite sessions, I think, of the entire event, which is all about AI and really getting actual about it. And for me, some of the key reflections of what you were talking about is the human factors, number one, and keeping mm -hmm. humans in the loop, but also some of the intention action gaps we're seeing, which are very understandable. I think what you're doing really helping to facilitate those gaps. So, mm -hmm. Brendan Jay, perhaps from each of you, what's your kind of key takeaway so far? But so many questions after your session. Did any of them surprise you? I wasn't surprised by any questions. Were you surprised by any questions? I was surprised by one question about yes. the cost involved Indeed. in oh, production. Yes. Uh, you know, one of the one of the speak, one of the attendees had asked me, you know, we're running a few POCs. Yes. If I want to scale it to two thousand users, Absolutely. how how much does it go to cost? Right. So already people are thinking about scaling it up, and they're concerned by the cost which will hit them. Exactly, yeah. exactly. I think cost is one of those as well, yeah. but also areas around expertise. You mentioned a few some of the cultural factors as well, skills development. It really is a holistic piece isn't it, mm -hmm. to make this a reality. Yeah. Now, I know you guys have been working together at Quick and Harmon for a long period of time, really established relationship there. Can you unpack what you shared in the presentation about the complementary strengths of this partnership and how you're enabling some of these gaps to be closed? Yeah, I mean, I think the, I think the one of the most important things that we talked about is we talk about that it's not just about technology, right? Exactly. We provide, I know we we provide you with really good technology but we also are thinking about this more holistically i mean i, I talked a lot about the digital natives yes, right yes. these these people that grew up with technology and the way they're approaching exactly. it so we have to think about the ethics around the technology and how it gets implemented uh, harman has been a great partner in, in pushing the envelope with our product a little bit. I mean, yeah. you were one of the first to do something with chat GPT in our product. So Absolutely. I'd love to hear more what, what you think about it. So, you know, if you look at uh, Click not just as the front end, right? There's a lot more Click brings to the table. B is the AutoML framework. And we are one of the early ones to integrate OpenAI uh, yeah. chat GPT services uh, with Click. We did it back in March. We actually built, we had several thousand users using the Click dashboards. And we wanted to test a new experience with them, right? Some of the times people get inundated with all the data in the dashboard, they lost some time. So we wanted to give a more natural interface, like you know the ones you get here. So we were the early ones to pilot it, and, and people love it. So we are trying to now see if we can go production with a lot more users with that. And you are you're influencing the way we're thinking about the product as well. I right. Mean, yeah. We had we had a product demo earlier yes. that I know you saw. I know, yeah. You can see the yeah, influence exactly. from our customers exactly. impacting yeah. where the product's going. So yeah. it's very really amazing. Speaking about earlier, actually, from Click. Big world a few, few months ago, one of the key feedbacks for me was a the power of community, yep. but the fact that people are being listened to. Yes. And you give feedback on, on you know, a challenge you have or an opportunity you have in your organization, and you see that coming through in the product development. And if there's a reason for not doing it, that's unpacked as well. So Perfect. that active listening, is that yep. what you need for the active intelligence? So you're building the community around yep. that. I think the partnership here, brilliant example of that in action too. Yeah. And you mentioned there about like, trust came a lot today. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned the demo I saw at the booth too. And again, data quality. The, the kind of granular information you were getting back, data quality was almost one of the first returned answers there when you were looking at what was missing. You know, is a particular um, demographic missing from, from the data? Is there an untitled, um, is some of the metadata missing? Mm -hmm. Is it unspecified data? So many variations, but quality was right up there all the way along. So I love that. Oh, completely. Really look, look, one of the, we, we talked about the five missteps, right? One, yes, of, the, yes. one of the first mi missteps is underestimating the importance of data, Indeed. Yeah. Indeed. right? And, and the, the data set you were looking at yes. in this demo, what it, it was amazing to find just the utter, utter disaster of some exactly. of the quality, it right? Really was. It was really dirty. But generative really, dirty. really yeah. was able to identify yeah. this. But the best thing about it yes. was a lot of data quality solutions will say, yeah, you have a data quality issue. Yeah. This actually recommended what to fix and how to Precisely. fix it. That's Precisely. really fascinating. And I know yeah. Yeah. given the, the sectors that you're in, yeah. getting those type of recommendations will help you mitigate, mitigate well, absolutely. risk too, absolutely. right? Absolutely. And if you look at the entire machine learning life cycle, mm almost 80% of the time is spent on data and data cleaning. It's just 20% yeah. where actually the model building happens, right? So you can see the amount of time and effort which goes in for, uh, you know, for the entire 80% uh, of the time. And that is, uh, you know, if you have, if you have automated mechanisms to clean up the data, identify issues of the type Brendan spoke about, you can actually shrink that entire model development life cycle significantly and that's a huge a huge improvement and oh my gosh that the 80 percent of the time is non-value added work exactly. yeah. it is exactly. not helping you mitigate risk it's yeah. not helping you make money or save money yeah it's just a time sink exactly so yeah exactly i think if you put all these things together as well i have to think about you know maslow's hierarchy of these that we all did it like business studies at school and things yeah. like that but re-employed to you mentioned data literacy earlier i did again been involved in click from an education point of view for a long time Completely. one of my biggest I, lo I love what you're doing there you mentioned about ai literacy 
could not agree more that that's where we're going. And particularly some of the innovations we've seen is making these more accessible to more roles. Yeah. That is absolutely huge as part of that empowerment. And that's what I see in terms of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. What we're building there here holistically, you need all these different elements. It's not just Have one. Done. Get the foundations right. It has yeah. to start with data as a differentiator. Mm -hmm. Because again, you know, we talk about AI and often it's just, say, a conversation about chat GPT, but there's many flavours, isn't there? There's Llama yeah. 2, whatever it might be, sure. it has to be designed to the purpose that you're putting it towards. Clearly. So yeah. education and technology together, absolutely empowering. Well, the really sure. interesting thing on the data literacy side yes. right now is we're at this point where the technology mm. is advanced enough and is yeah. accurate enough that data literacy is just part of everything exactly, you do. Exactly. You know, there there yeah. won't be a lot of training required on it because Precisely. the technology should be good enough to help you understand there. The AI literacy is its more than just understanding the data and the outputs, but it goes back to those ethical and risk conversations That's that right. we were talking about as well. Yeah. There's going to have to be a whole domain of understanding risks and, and ethics Absolutely. behind it. Yeah. Absolutely. And there is also the AI hype literacy, which is of needed. Yes. Because people think AI has a silver bullet to solve a lot more problems. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And particularly generative AI, it's become like a golden bullet, not even a silver bullet, right? <laughs> so, you know, that's that's an, that's additional concern for technologies like us, where, you know, AI is not the panacea for everything. You need to be selective and generative AI need to be extra careful and selective because a lot more unstructured data goes into building the model. And you need to be very, very careful with what the model outputs are. Well, that was one of the takeaways we were trying to get across today, right? Yeah. Was, was look, the, the I'm going to steal the golden bullet. I, <laughs> I like that one. I really do like that one. But... We, we were trying to get across that don't forget about your traditional mechanisms, yes, right? Exactly. There's still a place for pivot tables and bar charts in, yeah. in, in visualizations. There's still going to be. Absolutely. But you need to bring more of these advanced capabilities in and you need to not forget about the things that have made us successful. They'll come closer together yeah. and yeah. They're, they're starting to. Indeed, indeed. Yeah. I think overall we've got this age of integration coming together, haven't we? And again, complementary strengths come up so much. The human machine factors, uh, yeah. traditional AI and generative yep. AI as well. So again, lots yeah. of recurring themes here. I think we can come back to, and it brings me to an idea. I think we should do a deep dive. So yeah, sure. if we can do that, we can come back together in a couple of weeks' time. Let's reflect a little bit more over this event. Let's look into the AI kind of opportunity and challenge different flavors, but let's really unpack this with some of these really fantastic examples too. And I know we talked earlier about sustainability. Again, the demo I saw speaking to Julie earlier as well. Again, want to share some more about this because it really is showing the shared value benefits of doing this the right way as well, the business and society too. So I'd love to pack in some examples about that. So can we do it? Absolutely. Live tomorrow's next Sure, it'd be fun. Happy to do that. Yeah, yeah. Happy yeah. to do that. Stole a mart on that. Brilliant. Brendan. Jay, thank you so much for thank joining us today and everybody here too. More from us from very soon and more from the Click team. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.